Uh, hi everyone, I'm Lily Huang from uh, UC Riverside. So I, I need to spell my spell name? Okay. L-I-L-I-H-U-A-N-G. So I'm a PhD candidate from uh, UC Riverside. I'm working with uh, Professor Bars. Uh, my research is on uh, intelligent vehicle and uh, intelligent transportation systems. So um, at the beginning of my research, our plan is to use uh, LiDAR to detect vehicles. If you drive on the freeway for the uh, navigation purpose, you want to know where the cars are around you. So we use uh, LiDAR to detect those uh, vehicles. So the result is pretty good. We can know uh, where the cars are and their uh, velocity and their acceleration. Um, however, we found out that the range is limited. We can detect the objects for about uh, 40 meters around, but that, that's, that's not enough on the freeway. And they have some uh, noises and occlusion problems. So we say, OK, uh, LiDAR is not enough. So let's add uh, more sensors to it. So we use both uh, LiDAR and a camera. So we have developed a system that you can use LiDAR and a camera to detect the uh, vehicles, the uh, pedestrians, and those uh, other objects like the uh, traffic lights and the posts and the walls, everything. So um, the system developed was to localize the objects around you. So you know the cars, where are the cars, where are the, um, like the traffic lights, but, but that is not enough. You don't know where you are. So the general method is to use a GPS. You know, by a GPS, you can localize your uh, position. The problem is the GPS might lost its uh, reception, like in downtown LA or downtown, I don't know whether it works in downtown San Diego, but when we uh, make some experiment in Las Vegas, it failed to work. So GPS itself is not enough for, uh, to localize your own position. So we use uh, LiDAR and inertial sensors when the GPS does not work. You can use some other kind of sensors to uh, localize your, your own location. So that's the main part of my uh, research. That is to get the information around you and to get the information of yourself. So when we use LiDAR, it has a 180 degree beam. It rotates like this way. So you get everything around you. So uh, if, you put, if you have two LiDARs, you can put one in front of the vehicle and one at the back of the vehicle. So you, you can get a three, you know, 30 degrees of the, so you can get everything around you. So that's, that's very cool. So we use LiDAR, we can tell people, okay, this LiDAR is, it's very useful, right? And it can help you for navigation. So the vehicle manufacturer will add it to their vehicle, then it will be not so expensive. Currently, I believe the most popular LiDAR is about $5,000, but um, some, some not so expensive, some cheap uh, LiDAR is less than $1,000. So Toyota has put one of that kind of uh, cheap LiDAR on their car. So yeah, that's really? impressive. Oh, really? Yes, it's about, I think it's eight, $800. They're, they use that kind of cheap LiDAR for their cruise control. So if we prove to people that this is really useful, so we can reduce the cost of maybe like $500 or even less. Some of the technology use LiDAR, some of the, them use uh, a camera. But for LiDAR, this is very simple. Let's say we need to stop the cruise like uh, 30 meters. So your LiDAR only need to detect some objects that's like uh, 40 meters away or 35 meters away. So uh, you do not need a 100 or 200 meter LiDAR and you do not need a very wide beam LiDAR because you only care about the vehicle in front of you. So you can have a very narrow field of view LiDAR and the range is like uh, 30 meters, that's enough. That's why this LiDAR is not so expensive, but it is very useful. Okay, uh, I come from China. I come from uh, Beijing University of Posts and Telecommunications. So when I was an undergraduate student there, I'm working on a wireless communication and uh, its application in vehicle communication. 
So then I come to uh, Riverside. You know, my dad is uh, my dad is working on uh, mechanical engineering. So he's working with uh, vehicle design, uh, something like that. And uh, my husband is also a mechanical engineering student. <laughs> so all my family are working on vehicles. So they are working on vehicle design. But I'm uh, when I was an undergrad undergraduate student, I come to work work on uh, vehicle communication. Then I come here, I found that. I'm more interested in vehicle navigation because the vehicle uh, for vehicle to vehicle communication, um, it's you know it's hard to feel or to see the result. But for the vehicle navigation, you can see the image, you can see the uh, lidar output. So I found that I'm more interested in this kind of design and application and research. Yeah, yeah, I believe that uh, we have about. 25% to 30% students are female students. Yeah. They are still working in wireless communication. All my, most of my friends are still working in uh, wireless communications. Well, I guess it's a big area, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. so you have uh, students working on, uh, uh, they are from uh, computer science, uh, 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 civil engineering and mechanical engineering, and I'm from electrical engineering department. But we are all working on uh, like intelligent vehicle or intelligent transportation systems. We are there are many uh, female researchers on this area. Uh, I am a member of the uh, WTS. It's called Women Transportation. Uh, I didn't remember what S is association or something. Society, maybe? I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, you are correct. The society, women transportation society. So there are a lot of women researchers in transportation and intelligent vehicles. Yeah. So, like, I'm talking with my uh, friends from computer science. So we have, for the same problem, we have different, totally different solutions. But yeah, we can communicate and help each other to make a better understanding to the problem, and their idea really helps. I think uh, female students, when they are undergraduate student or where they are, where they are high school students, they do not know much about the engineering. So you know, when I told my friends that my new friends that I come from uh, UC Riverside Electrical Engineering. They are very surprised. They say, oh, you are an engineering student. That, that must be very hard for females. But that is not true. So you need to know uh, more about what engineering looks like. It's not, very, uh, it's not hard, and it's very interesting. So I think those uh, professors and those uh, engineering societies, they should give more uh, opportunities to the young students to tell them what engineering really are. It's, Sounds to be you know scary, but in fact it's very uh, interesting, and I really enjoy it. I love it. I think I'm trying to find a job in industry. So you know, I really enjoy the feeling that I can do something, and I can see the result. So, uh, I, so I prefer to find a job in industry, and I hope I can still find a job in this area, in vehicle navigation and computer vision. And I think this conference it really. Uh, provide a great opportunity for us as students to uh, communicate with the top professors and the researchers, re research institute in this area. And we have also some people from uh, industry. So we can see what the other guys in this area are working around and we can talk about and it's, it's, this is really a good opportunity for us to meet and talk and have great dinner, of course. <laughs> Great, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you.